This is the Lightlock X1, and this is the Lightlock X3. Now, they're claimed to be the toughest locks on the market, but if you've seen any of my videos before, you'll know that I don't take much notice of manufacturer claims. So have a good look at these now, because I'm about to destroy them. Now motorcycle theft is real and you do have to be aware of it, but please don't let social media clickbait put you off owning a bike. I did some research recently based on data from 200,000 Bennett's motorcycle insurance customers and found that even using the most basic disc lock can reduce the chances of your bike being stolen by a factor of three. And using heavy duty security can make a bike less likely to be stolen, slightly, than the average car. Now I'll put a link to that article in the description. I'm a member of the International Association of Auto Theft Investigators and I work with industry experts like the MCIA's Motorcycle Crime Reduction Group, Sold Secure, the Master Locksmiths Association, Datatag and many other independent security brands, not to mention serving and retired police officers. Now that means I can get the facts on bike theft and I can tell you that a very common form of theft is simply snapping a bike steering lock, then pushing it away and leaving it for a while to see if it has a tracker. And while they wait, thieves will often lock the pinch bike themselves. But tool attacks do happen, and that's why your goal should be to make your bike more hassle to steal than the one next to it. Now of course, bikes do get lifted into vans, so I'll be explaining later in the video how to make that much harder for a thief too. So anyway, let's get on with things and see how this Lightlock X1 performs. It costs $149.99 and uses Lightlock's own Baronium, which founder and CEO Professor Neil Barron told me is a ceramic composite that's fused into hardened steel. Now you can see the ridges of it here where I've trimmed some of the rubber coating that protects your bike's um, paint, I've trimmed some of that away. It weighs 1.73 kilograms and the internal dimensions of the shackle are 101 by 197 millimeters. And that's important as it means the lock can fit over the front wheel and tire of my GS and my ZX6R. It won't quite go over the VFR 800, but you can use it over car spokes as they can be very hard to attack. It looks like, oh, well, they'll just cut the spokes or smash them, but actually it's really hard to get the angle grinder in there and I have tried smashing them. On my BMW, I pass it through these holes in the hub, making it really hard to attack. Anyway, let's see that testing. Unsurprisingly, my 42 inch bolt coppers did nothing but split the outer rubber of the light lock X1. Testing it on an old Triumph Tiger Wheel, I first whacked hell out of it with a lump hammer, but it didn't yield at all. And like I said, in case you're wondering, I have tried smashing the spokes, but it didn't work. Really, a D-lock is likely to be attached to the bike, not laid on the ground, but just to check, I laid up a piece of old railway track and hit it repeatedly with a sledgehammer just to make sure it wasn't brittle. Again, nothing but cosmetic damage. Then I tried drilling out the lock cylinder, but I couldn't get through it. So finally, it was the angle grinder attack. Now, I could have been quicker if I hadn't lost the spindle key, but it took one and a half discs to cut this.
Now I don't normally show real-time lock cutting except where I have to discredit ridiculous claims like the four and a half minutes to cut a seven millimeter chain that Fortnite posted. I did that one in five seconds. <laughs> Now I wasn't tickling this lock to drag the time out. I've been doing this for five years now, and if you watch some of the other videos, you'll know that if I can get through something quickly, I will. I don't show cut times, as for a start, I'm working in ideal conditions with a mains grinder, which can provide a lot of torque. And I should say that I have benchmarked this against battery grinders, and also against petrol ones, which surprisingly didn't give any advantage. The other reason I don't normally show this is that it can seem quicker than people might expect, and then you get all the comments of it not being worthwhile locking your bike. Even something that takes a few seconds can seem a lot longer on the street when you're making a lot of noise and a lot of sparks. Look, the real world is very different to controlled conditions, so any testing has to provide comparisons with other kit. Always look for sold secure ratings on any lock you buy. I'll pop a link in the description to an article that explains them. Now I need to say that after this, I managed to cut another section of the Lightlock X1 shackle with just one disc, and it was slightly quicker than the thickest chains I've tested. Now that's 22 millimeter. But it was still better than almost all portable security I've ever attacked. And the lock body on this uses fused ceramic and hardened steel construction too, so it's much harder to cut than the shackle. So we're using this on the wheel, and some disc locks can take longer to destroy, but their weak point is that the brake disc itself can be cut to remove them. Now also, while there was enough movement in the cut shackle of this lock to get it off the car spoke, if I put it around the wheel, I'd have had to have made two cuts, which would take at least two discs. And if I was using a portable grinder, there's a good chance that I'd have needed spare batteries. Remember, the testing I do isn't about showboating, as I rarely make lock test videos. It's all about helping you compare all the locks I've tested, which you can find at bikesocial.co.uk in the product reviews section. So, apart from the excellent Hiplock D1000, which I tested a few months ago, the Lightlock X1 is the toughest portable lock I've ever tested. Well, it was, until I tested the Lightlock X3. And it's not much bigger, uh, and I mean, you can see here, they're pretty much the same size. And at 2.08 kilograms, it's not much heavier either, but look at the shackle under the coating, you can see more of this fused ceramic. And the internal dimensions of the shackle are only slightly tighter than the X1 at 100 by 195 mm and that means I can still get it over the wheels of my GS and ZX6R. It'll still pass through the holes in the GS hub too. So, here's the attack testing. And the bolt croppers did nothing more than cosmetic. The lump hammer attack gave the same results. And the Lightlock X3 was also only made to look a bit tatty by being smacked with a sledgehammer. I couldn't drill the lock out either, but you can see it looks different to the X1, and that's because it has an Abloy Sentry cylinder fitted, which is one of the most pick resistant locks on the market. Now, I know what comments are coming, but lock picking is not a thing in real world motorcycle theft. As an entertaining sport, it's of interest to many people and also as a way to promote a shop. But on the street, you're very, very unlikely to find scrotes with picks or even the tools that lockpicking lawyer and Bosnian Bill made. I've tried repeatedly to make contact with the LPL and I offered to work with him to show real world lockpicking on the streets of London still stands. The tool of choice is the angle grinder. So here's what happened. Again, I'm using the same techniques and pressure here that gets me through other locks a lot quicker. I've no skin in this, and Lightlock isn't paying us in any way for this content. 
This lock is just extremely well designed. By the way, someone suggested using polishing compound to reduce wear to the cutting discs, but that didn't help when I tried it on an off cut of the X1. So that took four, four discs, which makes it the toughest uh, lock, chain, anything I've ever tested against an angle grinder. Yeah, I was impressed. What I didn't say there was that again, if this had been over the wheel and tire of the bike, or even on a thicker spoke, it'd have taken two cuts. So a good eight discs, that's some serious protection. Now this is all well and good, but this won't stop a couple of thieves picking your bike up and selling it into the back of the van. For that, you have to tie the bike to something. And when you're out and about, a 14 mil chain is gonna be about the thickest you can carry before it gets too heavy. Actually, I just use this 11 millimeter noose end chain as it rolls up small. You can see how you can, you can get that under some seats. So it rolls up small and it's not too heavy. And it gives a reasonable amount of protection. I like this noose end because uh, on a normal chain, you can imagine that's the length that you'll get. On a new send chain, if you imagine you wrap this around a, a lamppost, my arm, pass it through the noose, and you've got more length, as long as you can attach that to a lock. Now the X1 will just about squash through these links, but on both, I've cut a piece of the rubbery coating off and now it fits easily. Obviously, this chain is the weakest point of this setup. But any thief is gonna have to cut the chain before they can move the bike. Then it still won't roll anywhere until they've got that lock off, and that is gonna take a lot of work. It could be argued that the rear wheel is better to secure than the front, but it's very unusual to see bikes being pinched through having the wheels removed. And remember too, that we're talking about portable security here, something that you're gonna use when you're out and about touring or just popping out for the day. At home, you can really go to town if you want, as you haven't got to lug everything about with you. So, is this, the Lightlock X3, better than the Hiplock D1000? That's still a brilliant lock, but there's no denying that the slightly larger capacity of the Lightlocks makes them a little more versatile for motorbikes. This is the hip lock I've been using for ages, and despite me removing the silicon sleeve, then wrapping it in tape to protect my bike's pain, it still won't fit over the wheel. With the silicon on, obviously it's a little bit thicker, and it, it, it looks a lot better than, than my tatty one. I took the silicon off though, because it, it would go through those holes in the hub of my GS, but with the, just the tape on, it goes through really easy, and that's how I've been using it. It's been great, and obviously I've been using it on car spokes too, but the light lock's got the edge with its, with its size. Oh yeah, I, I painted the body of this red and obviously it's got all chipped through use. So I'd be less likely to ride off with it fitting. I really hope that both hip lock and light lock 
start introducing some brightly coloured body options for motorbikes. Oh yeah, and uh, if you want to see these busted light locks and you're going to Motorcycle Live this year, call in at the bike social stand and you can have a proper look at them. Come and have a chat with us. I, you know, I'd, I'd love to talk to you about security or whatever you want to talk about really. If you're a member of Bike Social, either through buying your insurance direct from Bennett's or you signed up at bikesocial.co.uk forward slash join, we'll give you a free booklet with loads of exclusive offers and discounts that you can use at the show. And the Met Police rightly recommends a layered approach to security, which means using multiple devices to make your bike as awkward to steal as possible. The Lightlock X1 and especially the X3 make it much, much harder than it could be to steal.